Hello and welcome everyone to yet another tech enthusiastic video from Edureka. Today we will be discussing about polymorphism in Java. So, polymorphism. Let us now discuss about the agenda for today's session. Firstly, we shall understand what exactly is polymorphism. Followed by that, we shall look into some examples to understand polymorphism in a better way. Later, we shall understand the types of polymorphism in Java that are the static polymorphism and uh, dynamic polymorphism. Followed by the types of polymorphism, we shall understand the characteristics of polymorphism in Java. And then we shall go through the super keyword. And finally, we shall wind up the session with the difference between the static polymorphism and the dynamic polymorphism in Java. So I hope I made myself clear with the agenda. Now let's quickly begin with our session for today. The first topic, what is polymorphism? To understand this phenomena, let's take an example of a chameleon. I hope you all know what exactly is a chameleon. In the real world, you might have seen this creature changing its color based on its requirement to hide itself from the predators. If someone inquires you, how does it do that? You can simply say, because of its polymorphic nature. Similarly, in the programming world, Java objects possess the same functionality where each object can take multiple forms. This property is known as polymorphism in Java, where poly means many and morph means one or more forms. In this session for today, we shall discuss one of the key concepts of object oriented programming, which is none other than polymorphism. Now that we have understood what exactly is polymorphism, let us go through some examples. Here you can see the image. The person in the middle can act in multiple forms. Firstly, you can see the same person being a student, followed by that he will become an employee of a company and also he would like to play some sports. Followed by that, the same person is acting as an interviewer for a fresher, then the same person is acting as a normal human being who is purchasing groceries, and followed by that the last example of the same person being a family man. You can see the same person is playing different roles at different situations. This is called as the polymorphism of a human being. Now that we have finished the first example, let us go through the second example of polymorphism. Here, suppose you have to save contact numbers of different persons. Now it's not possible that every single person in your contact list have two numbers, but few of them may have. So in this situation, let us assume that you have a friend by name Jack and Jack has two numbers. You have saved the first number and in case if you want to save the second number, you don't have to create the new method called create contact and save the second identity number. You can just call the same create method what you have created for the first one and save the second number with the same name. Here you have saved a Jack contact ID with the same name, but you have two different numbers. So this example is based on polymorphism. Now that we have discussed two examples of polymorphism, let us move ahead to the next topic where we will discuss about the types of polymorphism available in Java. So there are basically two types of polymorphism available in Java. They are static polymorphism and dynamic polymorphism. Let us understand each of these in a bit detail. Firstly, the static polymorphism. A polymorphism that is resolved during compile time is known as static polymorphism. Method overloading is an example of compile time polymorphism. So what exactly is method overloading? Method overloading is a feature that allows a class to include two or more methods to have the same name but the different parameter list. To understand this in a bit more detail, let us go through a sample program. So you can see this particular example is based on polymorphism or method overloading. So in the class called my class, we have created two methods. The first method is my class, which has the statement to print the message bricks. Followed by that, in the same class, we have another method called my class, which has the same name. But inside this method, we have a variable i of integer data type. And inside the second my class method, we have a message which says building new house that is plus i plus feet tall. We are giving the height which is i. So this height will be replaced here and the message will be printed. So followed by this, we have the void. In this void method, which is the info, we have a message again which says houses height feet tall. 
So this height will be replaced by the height we provide in the second my class method and followed by that we have another void info which prints the message saying s plus houses height feet tall. So you can see we have two different methods with the same name that is my class and followed by that the second my class and followed by that we have the same info or the same info method with different parameters. Now this is our main class which will access these two methods and print the data which we require. Now that we have gone through the program, let's execute this and see the output. As you can see, the program has been successfully executed and the output has been printed here. You can see that the provided height is zero, so the building has been provided as zero feet tall. If we replace the height with another number like say 100, then the program will be executed again and the updated data will be printed here. So that was static polymorphism and method overloading followed by static polymorphism and method overloading which will advance into the second type of polymorphism which is none other than the dynamic polymorphism. So dynamic polymorphism is a process in which a call to an overridden method is resolved at runtime. That's why it is called runtime polymorphism or dynamic polymorphism. Method overriding is one of the ways to achieve dynamic polymorphism. In any object oriented programming language overriding is a feature that allows a subclass or a child class to provide specific implementation of a method that is already provided by one of its superclasses or parent classes. Now let us execute a sample program to understand dynamic polymorphism and function overriding. As you can see this particular example is based on method overriding or dynamic polymorphism here. We have a parent class and a child class. The parent class is the animal and the child class is the dog. So inside the parent class we have a method called move and similarly with the same name the same method is also included in the child class dog. So what exactly we are doing in the main program is we're trying to call the parent class method move as well as the child class method move in our main program. So let's see and execute the program and generate the output. You can see the program has been successfully executed and both the methods are being called. So inside the parent class animal the method move is been executed and animals can move message is been printed successfully. Followed by that in the child class dog the move method is been called and the message dogs can walk and run message is been printed successfully. So with this let's move ahead and understand the next topic in our discussion that is the advantages of dynamic polymorphism. So the first advantage of dynamic polymorphism is support for method overriding. Dynamic polymorphism allows Java to support overriding of methods which is central for runtime polymorphism. Followed by that the second advantage is it allows subclasses to add its specific methods subclasses to define the specific implementation for the same. So these are the few advantages of dynamic polymorphism. Let us move ahead and understand the different characteristics of polymorphism in Java. In addition to these two main types of polymorphism in Java, there are other characteristics in Java programming language that exhibit polymorphism like coercion. Polymorphic coercion deals with implicit type conversion done by the compiler to prevent type errors. A typical example is seen as an integer and string concatenation as shown in the following example. You can see string str is equals to string is equals to 2. So this example is based on coercion which will be an implicit type conversion done by the compiler. Followed by coercion we have operator overloading. An operator or method overloading refers to a polymorphic characteristic of same symbol or operator having different meanings or different forms depending on the context. For example, the plus symbol is used for mathematical addition as well as string concatenation. In either case, only context that is the argument types determines the interpretation of the symbol. The first plus symbol is used in string data type. So the plus will be considered as a concatenated operator and followed by that the next place where the plus operator is used is in the integer data type. So here the summation of both the numbers will be performed and the output will be as this. So the first one is 22 and the second one is 4. Followed by operator overloading, we have polymorphic parameters. 
polymorphic parameters allows the name of a parameter or method in a class to be associated with different types. In the below example, I have defined content as a string and later as an integer. The declaration of polymorphic parameters can lead to a problem known as variable hiding. Here, the local declaration of parameter always overrides the global declaration of another parameter with the same name. To solve this problem, it is often advisable to use global references such as this keyword to point to the global variables within the local context. Now with this, let us move ahead into the next topic that is the super keyword. Super is a keyword. It is used inside the subclass method definition to call a method defined in the super class. Let us execute a sample program to understand the functionality of super keyword. As you can see, this particular example is based on super keyword. So here you can see we are trying to call a method from the parent class or super class using the super keyword. Now let's try to execute this program and see the output. You can see that the program has been successfully executed and the method from the super class is been extended successfully into the child class using super keyword. Now with this we shall move ahead and understand the basic difference between the static polymorphism and dynamic polymorphism. The first difference is static polymorphism relates to method overloading, whereas the dynamic polymorphism relates to method overriding. The second difference is in the static polymorphism, errors are resolved at compile time, whereas in dynamic polymorphism, errors can only be determined at runtime. Let us go through a code segment to identify errors in static overriding. You can see the first line of code, which is void difference between the numbers X and Y. Followed by that, we have another method with the same name where we'll differentiate the numbers X and Y of float data type. And the last int diff A and B. So here we identify a compile time error. Similarly, let's go through a code segment for dynamic polymorphism. You can see the college here is the parent class and the object we are creating is from the child class. So the reference of parent is pointing to the child here. That is college OBJ is equals to new student. Followed by that the method of child is being called which is OBJ dot exam. So this is an example for dynamic polymorphism. So with this we come to an end of this particular session. So if you have any queries regarding this session, then you can please write us down in the comment section below. Till then, thank you and wish you all a very happy learning.